you know, as crazy as it sounds, the Fed's actually, they're not killing the patient right now, right? Historically, the Fed constantly, you know, over medicates the patient and then then the economy dies and, and you know, the Fed causes more recessions right. than they, they save. You know, we seem to have been slowing down, right? Mm-hmm. So let's, let's hope that that continues. I mean, if we could turn the yield curve around without a major risk, even if it, you know, if it's a small recession or something like that, like that would be a huge win, right? Right. Uh, now, is that going to happen? You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. Hey, we got some big numbers out, PMI numbers, where's the economy heading, and what should you do about it? That's really the question. James Locke is with us now from Pool Lock. It's great to have you back, James. So, uh, hey, first, got a question or comment uh, for James, myself, shoot us an email, kl at kerrylutz.com. So, James, uh, PMI number comes out weaker, well, weaker than expected in quotes. Uh, no surprises here. Are we in a recession yet or not? I guess officially not, right? We need uh, the, we need two quarters of uh, negative GDP, which, of course, the last time that happened, the government lied to us and said we weren't in a recession. Uh, it's going to be harder to dance around it this year. Uh, but, you know, that PMI, that's that's a good indication because that's you know all the producers and what they're what they're doing so you know they're going to be a leading indicator of what's going to be on the shelves and out there and available and what what people are buying right right and if they're scaling back it's because they know consumers aren't going to be uh, purchasing now you know the U.S. consumer so far has been unstoppable uh, pretty much and you know I wonder when that's going to come to a uh, to a head and it will right right. Uh, because, you know, despite the American belief that we can spend our way out of things, uh, and sometimes it works, it, it does, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but if we're not manufacturing and producing, that's, that's uh, you know, that's going to ultimately lead to going into recession. So when, you know, I've been telling and talking with my clients about mid-2024, mm-hmm. um, if the Fed raises rates again, I think that might accelerate that. Uh, I really hope the Fed doesn't, but mm-hmm. but I do think, you know, with this economy slowdown, we have less optimism uh, for for next year. I think they're predicting GDP to be around 1% yeah. um, in 2024, which, you know, 1% can turn into negative real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's a rounding error, right? <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. You know, they, you know, they it's funny you say that because they all the time revise numbers down, you know, the next month and then, you know, previous months. And, and that just kind of gets swept under the rug uh, a lot of times. And, you know, sometimes that the devil's in the details, right? When they start revising numbers down, mm-hmm. you know, that it's, that it's indicating, Hey, there's, there's problems. Yeah. And right? I always see these uh, revisions two months later and boom, you know, right. It's it's like oh well what they bought a headline is what it comes down to right yeah that's exactly right so so and so I do think recession is happening I uh, and we're gonna see more of these or the best way I describe it is you know mm-hmm. lower highs and lower lows as we move forward right so where the S and P got down to close to forty one hundred and then you know right. the Fed is gonna raise rates okay great and and yeah. we rally we rally back a little. And, you know, the question is, is that going to be enough to push us all the way back to 4,800 and 5,000? No way. Right. Yeah. I still think we're going to end the year somewhere around 4,100 on the S&P. You think, huh? Yeah. And so that's a little lower than here. You know, in that same breath, I don't have any reason to sit. I mean, the economy isn't terrible, right? That's the other thing. So I have no reason to say we're going to slide away into... You know, serious, uh, you know, loss of value in the in the market. 
Now, an election year coming up, you know, politics aside, Biden is not doing anything to help this economy. You know, <laughs> no, isn't that his job? Or actually, the job of the politicians is not to do anything to hurt it. What can gotcha. they really do to help it other than dumping money into, uh, you know, helicopter money here, right? Yes. Yes. And, you know, I, I just think that um, leadership, I, you know, as crazy as it sounds, the Fed's actually, they're not killing the patient right now, right? Historically, the Fed constantly, you know, over medicates the patient and then then the economy dies and, and you know, the Fed causes more recessions right. than they, they save. You know, we seem to have been slowing down, right? Mm-hmm. So let's let's hope that that continues. I mean, if we could turn the yield curve around without a major risk, even if it, you know if it's a small recession or something like that, like that would be a huge win, right? Right. Uh, now, is that going to happen? Well, we'll see. Now they're starting to chatter again about the Fed raising rates another quarter point in December. I, I think that's a bad idea. Yeah. Well, you so you think they're going to raise them? Well, it's the chatter has started again, but still, if you watch that, like Fed rate and, and the predictions, they're still saying no. Uh, so I, I think the Fed's going to be smart about it. They're probably going to continue to talk tough, but I think we're going to see uh, that they're going to leave rates alone and Sorry. you know continue to be. And I think they are data dependent. They're going to wait and see. And you know, if we do start having negative GDP quarters, then. They'll probably still leave it alone. I, I think I don't think we're going to get any rate cuts in June of 2024. I think that's optimistic. Uh, we may go through the whole year without it, but uh, towards the end of the year it may start being a reality. Okay. All right. I'll buy it. I'll buy it. So, what else do you think is in store here? Uh, you know, at some point they're going to have to cut rates. Uh, yes. When things start really falling apart, what about the banks? Uh, what's your take on what's going on with the banks? Yeah. So w- with the slowdown of the interest rates, that's easing pressure on the banks. And and I think they're finally starting to, you know, at least get their footing underneath them. Mm-hmm. They're certainly not out of the woods. I mean, the, the amount of debt banks are, are carrying and, and the pressure of, you know, interest rates being up this high so quickly, uh, you know, means that there's still risk out there, right? Right. There's still risk out there. So I, I'm not, you know, some of the bigger banks don't really, you know, they can they can weather the storm a little bit easier, but these regional ones, I don't, I don't like at all. Uh, we we definitely stay out of them uh, from an investment point of view. You know, we I don't I don't want to, you know, because that could pop up at any time. You know, if there's some sort of all all we need is you know, uh, war in Israel to get out of control in some way and then we start having economic uh, repercussions from it and that puts pressure on the banking system so there's all kinds of you know holes that can pop up in our in our boat right. um, and we already have a, a weak banking system so that you know, we do you know I, I don't I don't I, right now I'm I'm not I don't want to go and say I'm, I'm anti bank stocks and things like that but we're not we're not adding to any positions or doing anything with regional banks. Okay. Some of the larger ones, we you know, we'll we'll hold some positions. All right. So oil, hundred dollar a barrel oil, oil it guarantees oh, oil. a recession, doesn't it? Yes, it. Yes, it does. I I think there's too much chaos in the Middle East. I'd be surprised if oil doesn't hit a hundred dollars a barrel. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it. We're, we're it's a little bit of a crystal ball kind of look and feel. Yeah, uh, but you know, I don't think it's too risky a uh, a no. speculation at this point, right? No, and and I, I'm I'm with you. I mean, it could hit a hundred a barrel. And then this is all these fine lines. If when it gets up there, what kind of recession are we talking about? What kind of chaos is going on in the Middle East? You know, are oil producers cutting off their nose despite their face a little? Uh, you know, money lust for oil only goes so far are we doing things internally in the u.s to you know produce our own energy uh, and this goes back to you know uh government policy and mm-hmm. you know, biden is not the best actually there was a great article 
in Zero Hedge. I don't remember where the article came from, but that U.S. oil production is hitting peak levels, 13 million barrels a day, because try as the admin might to destroy the oil industry, the demand is there. Right. Uh, the technology keeps advancing. I was just in an oil field out in Canada, right? Um, out in um, Saskatchewan. Okay. And it's heavy, heavy oil. And they take in the fields that were de depleted by vertical wells because vertical wells are not good for, um, right. for heavy oil. And uh, they're drilling new wells there all over the place. Uh, they've drilled five of them. I mean, this company, if they, if it's hundred dollar barrel oil, they're going to cash in. They're just going to yeah. be printing money and their costs keep going down too, James, because they've taken this depleted field with a lot of capital investment there. And uh, they've done the 3D size, seismograph, seismology on it. And, I, you know, like, small company but it's a micro cap could turn into a medium-sized producer in the not too distant future i'm not pushing this all i'm saying is this is a field that was given up for dead you know went through bankruptcies and everything else and now it's an extremely profitable field and that's exactly what's happening in the permian basin so 13 million barrels a day and that's with the admin pushing against it. Imagine if it was like the last administration, which was drill, baby, drill. We'd yeah. be 15 million and OPEC would be a non-entity, right? That's See, that's the thing is, this is why I don't understand why people can't see that. Like making OPEC a non-entity or not as important as it is, is like, it's the best thing we could do as a country. It felt like, yeah. and it, it's it's not, we're never going to be sell. So we, we, we use so much, oil energy right you know it's not like we're never going to be importing oil but but we're importing <laughs> yeah we're yeah well i mean that's the, thing. the whole world needs it now and, and the more yeah. we can do and the more we control that the better i mean we're starting to see all of these you know on, on a much smaller level we're starting to see all these kind of uh what, what i'll call a you know private investment into land drilling and all this sort of stuff uh now you know, when I put my fiduciary financial advisor hat on, I'm never a big fan about illiquid investments. But when they're talking about the, the natural gas and, and oil, you know, right. like you said, you mentioned something, you just kind of breezed over it, but technology is huge, right? Oh my God. Yeah. Like I watched, I watched them, you know, the roughnecks on the field doing their thing and, you know, the way they monitor it and, and there's even more innovations coming where you can take, uh, you can treat this uh, heavy oil with certain uh, chemicals and turn it into light, sweet oil. Yeah. It'd be huge. Yeah. And, I mean, there's so much heavy oil around, a lot of which isn't really desirable in the scheme of it. So, a hey, $100 barrel oil, for sure. Certainly, with the hostility of uh, our government against oil, a real possibility. So, Hey, what about uh, student loan debt? Um, it doesn't seem to have made a big impact. The fact that people now, uh, now you have to pay your student loans, even though you got away without paying them for nearly three years. I mean, hey, talk about a vacation here, a uh, moratorium, right? Uh, That's right. Yeah. And it's a great you know, time to be a debtor. <laughs> uh, it's a great time to be a saver, right? <laughs> well, yeah. but. But you're right that they, they you know the student loan debt that's going to be something that's going to take a long time to mm -hmm. kind of have an effect because people will start paying and stop spending on anything it's going to it's going to continue to slow down the economy uh which is where i was saying hey we hope the fed doesn't push too much because a lot of these things take months 6 12 18 months to really have an effect you know on, on us and when you start talking about you know th these these debt repayments being forced, and you know it's it's a mixed bag, right? Like, well, you, you took the loan out, you know, for a reason. You should repay it. You know, go out and get a job that can allow you to repay it. Mm -hmm. um, you know that makes sense, uh, but we don't want to. You know, you don't want it to be too much so that it's stifling. But but that's definitely going to have an effect. We're we're going to see that right. uh, can continue to affect the. The thing now again, the administration continues to fight to try 
Okay. I just make that disappear. And you know, that just doesn't make any sense either to make it to make it disappear. We we need to make, you know, education affordable uh for for mm-hmm. people. That's the bottom yeah. line. Like like Absolutely. because that's how you make our future better, right? Is when mm-hmm. we put educated people back into the workforce. Smart yeah. people, you know, means that we can turn things that were previously garbage thrown on the side into usable energy, right? And that all comes from research and development and having the right people doing things. And, you know, we want smart workers to, to be out there. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, one or two other points. So uh, you mentioned in the pre-notes here about uh, pretty much uh, homeowners being locked in to their low yeah. rate mortgages. Uh, I can relate to that. <laughs> uh, hey, so what? Uh, what of that? Uh, what's uh, what's going to take to get people out of uh, out of your home to downsize when it costs you more to downsize than it does to uh, upsize here? Right? It's not. It's a, it's going to stay that way. Uh, and you even said, you know, you look. You you even commented like, you know, you're you're not moving, and I'm not suggesting you're moving, but it does more than just lock you into your home, which may not be a bad thing, be, because you're paying this rate, so you're not going to sell your home. So it shrinks the available market size out there. Mm-hmm. Home prices are remaining high. So we're now we're stopping first time home buyers from coming in to the market as well. And it also does things like if I am, so I'm here in Wilmington, Delaware, right? If, if, if there's a job in St. Louis, right. And I have to up and move. And it's going to cost me a ton to sell here, move there. I may not take that job right. in St. Louis, right? So it's again like as crazy as it sounds, you know, people not willing to sell their homes can actually affect the economy down the line as well. And, and you know, yeah. all these things are are interconnected, right? It's not uh, it's not any one piece, right? Yeah. So we we That's need clear. we need that. Not that we need it, but at some point, we have to get interest rates down a little uh, for mortgages to come down a little. And, and you know what we might find is home prices may not drop, but we might find home prices remaining flat for a decade. You know? mm-hmm. and- All right. I can relate to that. All right. Any other comments you want to make, uh, James, about the state of things uh, before we call it, a, call it a day? Yeah, listen, the world isn't coming to an end, right? But uh, the yeah. are there are uh, concerns out there. There are black swan events out there that are possible. You always got to, you know, keep yourself protected. We always, you know, we always stay income focused and, you know, making sure that needs right. need are met uh, and, and you know, from from guaranteed things and, and things that are predictable. There's no reason to take risk just for risk's sake. Take risk for reward sake. Right. And, okay. Uh, you know, just keep focused. So we'll see what happens by the end of the year. We like that. All right, James. Hey, appreciate you coming on. Got a question for me or James KL at carrylutz.com, poollock.com. And uh, hey, while you're at the site, financialsurvivalnetwork.com, make sure you sign up for your free newsletter. James, always a pleasure. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.